As a kid, I was always fascinated with history. I read about it, I watched documentaries, but now I want to visit and walk the ground of those historic places that I've spent years studying. Join me on my trek, History Adventures. Today on History Adventures, we're going to be walking around Tulagi and visiting the Guadalcanal Campaign Invasion Beaches. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese began expanding their reach in the South Pacific. Their plan of capturing Tulagi, the capital of the British Solomon Island Protectorate, and the surrounding islands would help them establish forward bases to advance on Port Mosby and New Guinea and to cut off supplies and communication between Australia and New Zealand from the United States. In May 1942, the Japanese captured Tulagi and the surrounding islands. They began construction on an airfield on the island of Guadalcanal and established a seaplane base at Tulagi and neighboring islands of Tanambogo and Gavutu. The plans for the Pacific Offensive Campaign were developed by the Allies. Codenamed Operation Watchtower was planned to capture Tulagi and Guadalcanal after reconnaissance spotted the Japanese building an airfield. The date was set for August 7, 1942. Bad weather on August 6 allowed the Allied forces to move towards their objective undetected by the Japanese. The invasion beaches were bombarded and Allied aircraft destroyed Japanese seaplanes at the base near Tulagi. The task force split into two groups. Transport Group Yoke headed towards the Florida Islands, Tulagi, Gavutu, and Tanambogo. Transport Group X-Ray headed towards Guadalcanal. 20 minutes before H hour, the Marines landed on the shores of the Florida Islands just west of Tulagi to protect the flank of the Tulagi invasion. The Marines would come ashore near this small village on the Florida Islands and would land unopposed by Japanese troops. Roughly an hour later, Marines would land on the Florida Islands east of Tulagi to cover that flank. At 8 a.m., the Marines began landing on Blue Beach on the shores of Tulagi. None of the landing craft reached the shores due to the coral, and the Marines waded ashore unopposed by Japanese troops. Today, the beach area is a place for locals to gather. There are several memorials, and a school was built by the Marine Raiders Association for the school children of Tulagi. The Marines would clear the western end of Tulagi and then begin moving east to capture the rest of the island. They had been met with little to no resistance until they approached what would become known as Phase Line A. There they would begin to meet heavy resistance from well-prepared Japanese defensive positions. During this time, Marines were landing on Gavutu and coming under heavy fire from Japanese defenders. These two small islands, Gavutu and Tanambogo, would be an absolute slugfest between the Marines and the Japanese defenders. On Tulagi, the Marines stop and set up defensive positions for the night. The Japanese on Hill 281 had a strong fortified position with bunkers and caves that they used to defend Hill 281. Throughout the night, the Japanese would attempt to infiltrate the Marine lines. The Japanese would make roughly five attacks, some crossing this very area known as the Cricket Pitch. Many times during the night was hand-to-hand -hand combat between the Marines and the Japanese attackers. On August 8, the island of Tulagi, Gavutu, and Tanambogo would be secured by the Marines. On Tulagi, 45 Marines were killed in action and 76 were wounded. The Japanese killed in action were 347 and 3 were captured and roughly 40 to 70 swam to the Florida Islands where they were later tracked down by Marines or local patrols. 
The fighting on Gavutu and Tanimbogo cost the Marines 70 killed in action, 87 wounded, and the Japanese suffered 516 killed in action, and 20 were taken prisoner. Today, the island of Tulagi is quiet and peaceful. Let's take a tour of some of the historic locations on Tulagi. Gavutu and Tanambogo are privately owned and tourists are not allowed on the island, but you do get to pass the islands when you're touring on a boat. Roughly an hour after the landings on Tulagi were taking place, on August 7th, Transport Group X-Ray began landing Marines on Guadalcanal. The Marines began landing on Red Beach. It was a much different landing on Guadalcanal. The Marines met no resistance during the landing since only a small force of Japanese troops were on the island, and they were construction troops working on the airfield. After landing on Guadalcanal, the Marines immediately moved towards the airfield. I hope you enjoyed that episode of History Adventures. Please like and comment on our video. And if you can, please subscribe to our page. We truly appreciate it. And please share with everyone you know that's a history buff. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next episode.